Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I thought we'd have a look at the Operation Summer stuff again and kind of give my critique of it. Normally when it comes to these summer events it's pretty easy, at least for me, to work out my opinion on when it comes to it because there's not normally any hidden stuff inside, you know, there's not really any drop rates of rare things or there isn't any, you know, different uh, stuff which might be a little bit all over the place. Uh, you know, the, there's no things you have to worry about like when it came to stuff like the Space Race, you know, obviously you had the limit and things like that, the Battlefield Engineer event, you know, the Builder Bear events, there's normally stuff which is not really hidden, but it's not really told to you, uh, which is a big issue. Uh, so, with these summer events, they're pretty straightforward, you know, do the challenges, get the vehicles, Bob's your uncle. Uh, but <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, so, we're going to break this down into a few parts. Uh, the first one, we're going to have a look at the vehicles themselves. Second part, we'll talk about the challenges and how they compare uh, uh, to before. And obviously, I'll be giving my opinions on all of these different parts. And also, the third part is, uh, well, let's call it miscellaneous. So, um, or community areas. So, the first part is the vehicles. So, I think the Arado 196 is a great pick um, for a vehicle. First of all, the A3 is a really cool, interesting vehicle. The fact that it's made by a community member is also awesome. And another community member making the cockpit, I find that really amazing. Uh, I, I think it is great to see, you know, a shining beacon of what people can do in the game if they have the correct tools. And uh, it shows that you can benefit from it as well, because obviously, you know, he does get paid for the work that uh, happened here, which is awesome. I would have liked to see this in the main tech tree, though. Um, one of the things that we have seen, especially with the expansion of naval, is that there are a lot of nations which are missing a, a decent amount of float planes. And when it comes to Germany, they already have the HE-51 hydroplane or the float plane, and now they have another one in the form of a premium uh, gift one. It, it would have been nice, or hopefully, in the next update or the future, we see a German float plane which is similar to the Arado, maybe one of the Heinkels or the Focke-Wulf uh, float planes which were made around the same time. That would just be nice to see, uh, just to have a tech tree equivalent. But overall, I think it's a good pick for a vehicle. The next one, of course, is the IF-73. And for me, I think this is quite disappointing. Um, it isn't exactly anything that really stands out. It is pretty much exactly the same as a tech tree vehicle, uh, the M42, uh, which is sat there. And it doesn't really, you know, encapsulate anything, especially when, if you wanted to go down the, Sw the Swedish route, there was a bunch of different TDs which were made, you know, post-World War II, which used this same chassis, but mounted different guns on. We've actually gone through a few of them, you know, uh, through the um, past the developers series, and it would have been really nice to see one of those alongside stuff like the Delat Torn and the PVKV2. But instead, we get this. Um, the other thing as well is there even is another STRV103 in the files. You know, uh, I think it's the B variant or whatever it is. Uh, that could have been a really nice uh, one to have as well if you wanted to want to go down the go down the Swedish route. I am happy that a minor nation in the game is uh, you know uh, represented. In the event vehicles uh, because obviously that is one of the main issues i see with these event vehicles but still i think a better option could have been picked and a little bit more unique option could have been picked as well the next vehicle that was on offer is of course the freckia or the fresia this is a great pick um, and the reason why it's a great pick is because, first of all, you have similar vehicles in the tech tree already. Also, because of the fact that the Fretia has so many different variants of it, or many different uh, weaponry loadouts, you can easily plonk one of these in the tech tree. So, and also the fact that you have the double, uh, the double mounting of this. So you can either have its uh, version with the torpedoes and the two forties, uh, or you can have the one with the no torpedoes and the three forties. It gives players a little bit of extra choice and it means that people can you know just uh, kind of diversify a little bit more and the 40s are really strong when it comes to the game this thing should be a bit of you know uh, a little bit fast and a little bit all over the place and also give people a premium bonus so people who maybe don't like naval as much 
you know, they can get involved, get into the Italian tech tree and have a bit of fun with it since it's the most recent tech tree that has been added. And as I said before, it's nice to see a minor nation be represented. Now, uh, all we need to do, as I said, is to get the Freccia version in the tech tree, uh, which would be the equivalent, which would be the four torpedo one and the one 40 millimeter. But once again, great choice. Then we have these. Um, <laughs> so, um, there, I think I'm actually going to kind of do these as like a blanket uh, statement thing. So, one of the things that I've been uh, worried about over the last few years is the fact that we have a ever-increasing gap between the haves and the have-nots. What I mean by this is if you have a look at nations such as America, Germany and the Soviets, specifically those three nations, they get a lot of haves and other nations are stuck in the have not barrel. What I, we can see this with when stuff gets added to them, such as AGMs. Uh, we can see this when it comes to even uh, simple stuff, such as top tier vehicles, or new mechanics, or supersonics, uh, when they were released. And when you have specific nations which are always haves, meaning they always get the cool stuff, and then you have a bunch of have-not nations, what this ends up being is you it's very hard to convince people to play another nation right think about france um france doesn't really have any cool event vehicles since they've been released the lorraine 155 is a pretty interesting vehicle but that's really about it you know and uh, by the but since france has been released Let's have a let's have a think. Uh, let's just try and ballpark some American vehicles that have been released in events. So we have the FJ4B VMF, the Macava, the Macava Mark II. Uh, let's see the P59, the PT811, the Phelps. Uh, so that's that's a ridiculous amount of vehicles. So when uh, I'm discussing with somebody, you know, what trees to play, obviously you're going to say America. Because America has a bunch of different things that other nations don't have, so therefore they have a lot of experiences that you'll get out of the game in the American tech tree, so therefore there's not really much reason to play anything else. And if you keep adding top-tier event vehicles to these nations, then it constantly pushes this idea that there is no reason to play anything else in the game. Which is why I've said in the past... Um, we should just stop adding these uh, independent tech trees by themselves, the minor ones, and we should connect them to pre-existing trees, because what's happening with all of these marketing or business moves, where you're pushing people towards the major nations, the other nations just don't get played. If you play specific BRs, such as 70 to 77 jets, what you will find is it is dominated by American and sometimes German slash Soviet vehicles. It is very hard to ever see a Swedish vehicle. It is very hard to see a French vehicle. It is very hard to see many other nations' vehicles. And it is the same in tanks as specific BRs. Certain nations just don't exist. And one of the things that I've been doing on the Twitch channel is there's this like point system where if people watch, uh, they gain points over time, and you can set your... Um, you can set like goals for these points, so if they get a specific amount of points, they can ask for something. And one of the things that's been pretty successful is you can actually ask for your service record to be brought up on a stream. And you know, we can have a look at your stats, see how well you've done, and it's actually a really cool way of interacting with the community. And what I found by looking at, I would say 90% of them, is uh, the vast majority of people only play either America, Germany, or the Soviets, and they play maybe a little bit of everything else. There is a very few people in the War Thunder community who spread their seed far across all of the nations instead of just focusing on those major ones. And I think by adding more of these vehicles to these nations, that is what is going to happen. That, that idea is going to perpetuate, and we are going to just keep on increasing if we go down this road where there is no reason to play anything else. And it's and to see this happen again in an event is really, really sad. So I really do disagree with the Mexus, the, the Gorky and the Tiger, just fundamentally because of that point. I would much rather see 
um, in this event a French high tier vehicle, a British high tier vehicle, uh, something like a Chinese high tier vehicle, that would have been really awesome. And to try and get people to play other tech trees instead of just playing the major nations over and over and over again. Because if, if you want, as I said, if you want to make it so you just have only two or three nations in the game which have all of the experiences, just stop adding new nations. Because you're just wasting everybody's time because you just end up with inferior vehicles. Apart from, you know, some of the Swedish top tier stuff. So yeah, it's, it's really sad. I, I would advocate um, you swapping these around. So what I would do is I would have the top tier vehicles be some kind of Italian vehicle, then some kind of Swedish vehicle, and maybe one of the major nation vehicles. And then these would be a lower tier vehicle. So you still give people, you know, something for the major nations that they play, but at the same time, you give people a reason to play others. The, the classic example of something like this uh, working pretty well is the Orbital 74 HVG. This was an Italian premium that was added to the game uh, last year in Operation Heat, and it was and is very annoying to play against, but it is very, very fun to play. And at the same time, it is one of those vehicles which um, is able to uh, m make the grind through the tech tree a lot easier. Uh, so you can actually play some of those high tier vehicles that people want to play from Italy. And there was a massive expansion of people playing Italy because of it. Why can't we just have that, but for other nations as well? So we get a bit more variety in the game, instead of the, <laughs> the top tier nations just getting more stuff. So yeah, it's just, it's kind of sad. Uh, it kind of is. Uh, the, 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 just the, uh, looking at the vehicles themselves, they all look beautiful. If we are just picking them on should they you know, be top tier event vehicles, I think the F1 Tiger's a little bit high for an event vehicle. I would rather see, um, if we're going to do high tier event vehicles, I think sticking to rank 5 is the way to go. You know, that 7-0 to uh, maybe 9-0 period, uh, I think would be nice, which I think the Mexus is going to be probably 9-0. So, you know, that's kind of on the upper echelon of it, and the Gorky is obviously going to be 5-3 or 5-7, so that's on the upper echelon of it i would rather whoops i would rather see uh stuff which is a little bit a little bit lower um than these three vehicles um i, I don't i don't like stuff like the m60 mbt which is going to ruin the matchmaking of the game for uh <laughs> for at least a month because people are grinding it out and then you have the other side of the issue where because people are grinding it out others are going to bring out their top tier stompers and they're going to smash their face in so therefore all of the stats that you get for stuff like the m60 mbt are going to be useless for about a month because it's not going to be a good picture of how that thing's actually performing it's just going to be at getting its uh, face uh, hidden even though I, I don't think it was a 10 vehicle but still um, the the ideas I think that will happen with all three of these vehicles and it will mean that as I said we'll have a situation where it will be just kind of all over the place um, with match with top tier matchmaking because you're giving people who have maybe only access to one rank three a rank six vehicle it, it's going to destroy matchmaking uh, uh, in its entirety so the next stuff is the mythical creatures decals these are amazing these are stunning they whoever made these should definitely have been paid handsomely these are i i can't tell you how amazed i was when i saw all of these and if you haven't seen the werewolf one yet, you can find it on the tech hub in War Thunder News. And then the guns, the guns look nice as well. It's kind of hard to tell, you know, uh, once they're in the game, but it's always nice to have gun decorations. And the vehicle camouflages, I would say these are more positive than what we've seen in previous camouflages. What we've seen from previous camouflages is just basic, like, bicolor or tricolor camouflages, where this time it looks like they've gone historical camouflages. A great step. This is much better than it was before, and I highly, I highly agree with uh, historical camos for those vehicles.
Now let's talk about the challenges themselves. Uh, this stuff is pretty standard. The only the only thing I would like to uh, say about this is I like the fact that the majority of stuff is coupons. I think that's good. Uh, it means that there is more room for people to get what they want. You know, whether it's through the market or whether it's through the transfer system on console. If you get a specific mythical creature that you don't want, you can always you know try and sell it and get another one. I think this is a good system. I just want to mention that the first set of vehicles are not coupons and I don't know why I don't know why you would make something like a decal of a mythical creature a coupon but not something like a Freccia uh, 4, 493 or an IKV 73 why are these not coupons I don't get it because these at least the way I see it is these would be great opportunities for people who let's say they start the game um, in a year's time or something this would this would be a great way of them being able to pick up these vehicles if they didn't have access to the operation summer event of 2020 i'm never going to be in the boat of people who say that you know we need exclusivity for these things because i want i worked hard for this so therefore i should be able to keep it and nobody else you know should get it i'm never ever going to be in that boat because i believe people should have access to as many experiences as they can or at least you know have access to a way of getting those experiences at any time and having fun with those vehicles so it's very weird that they're not coupons i would much prefer them if they were um and then having this little community thing in I think it's kind of nice, you know, the the fact that yeah, you go and t activate the code SUMMER2020 on your profile um, in War Thunder and, well, on the War Thunder website, and if you collect all the decals, you get the werewolf decal, that's really cool, and also the Swedish gun decoration. It's nice to see that you have, like, a completionist reward as well, and also a way to interact with the social media of War Thunder. Now let's get on to the tasks. So the tasks themselves, and I've made my handy dandy spreadsheet, um, are as follows. So we'll go through them one by one. Uh, we'll compare them to the old ones and all of that good stuff. So you can see this is, um, uh, you have Operation Heat, which was last year's summer event. Then you have Operation Frost, which was uh, last year's and this year's winter event. And now we have the 2020. I also have the stuff from before, but you know what, we'll, we'll just disregard that for now. So the tank tasks the tasks for tankers um, for Operation Summer 2020 have got significantly harder. Um, and what I mean by this is you may look and say, oh, destroy 55 control vehicles. Well, that's true. Um, it, it has got easier for AB players to complete this. But for RB and SB players, it has gone through the roof. It has nearly doubled and has doubled since the Operation Heat event uh, previously. So this means that <laughs> this this just single challenge got twice as hard as before. And then this one has been getting progressively harder as well. We're now up two uh, win battles, so now we're up to 14. So it's very obvious they're trying to balance these two out to try and fit them together. So if you, by the time you've won 14 battles, you should have 50 enemy kills. That pretty much means 50% win rate, 28 battles. You should be getting about two kills a battle, right? Well, that's, that's the general idea. But it's still the fact that they've increased this so much, I don't think was required. Then capture 15 points, this has stayed the same. The 12 enemies, uh, this has got a little bit harder just for AB players though, it's the same for everyone else. And then the help allies destroy a vehicle 30 times this has stayed the same so nothing for the tankers has got easier three of them have got harder <laughs> and two of them have stayed the same now i thought personally that the tank one was the hardest challenge already um, and now they've made it even harder or well they haven't made it harder what they've done is they've made it take longer right so you're going to be spending more times in battles over the two-day period and i don't think this was required i thought the the setup they had before where at least for me it would take like four to six hours uh, every two days so about three hours a day to complete all three sets of tasks i think that was fine you know and and now making it harder we're probably going to go up, up to that seven hour mark that eight hour mark and now it starts getting a bit uncomfortable especially when you think about other events which sometimes you have to play for 10 hours a day such as stuff like the uh, operation shipyard event and still not get everything so 
I'm I'm a little bit annoyed that they increased it, but it's not a massive amount. It's just it's a little bit more, which is kind of annoying. Uh, but it it should be it should be okay. It it shouldn't have too big of a ramification. And then the the aircraft ones they just kept completely the same. Like the <laughs> they haven't changed them since Operation Frost, and that's fine. Um, they made them slightly harder in Operation Frost, but really small increments harder. And I think the assist one was required, especially because it's so easy to do them um, in stuff like Ground RB and Air AB. And I think overall, like the now that they've got these like set, you know, these challenges set, I think they're completely fine. Uh, they work really well. There's a little bit for everyone. It still would be nice when it comes to these challenges. Maybe you could have an AI challenge as a sick challenge thrown in, like kill, I don't know, uh, 20 AI ground targets like that. That would be kind of nice to have uh, for the RAB and RRB players. Um, but yeah, uh, like you could even like link it to the drop 10 bombs it could either be drop 10 bombs drop 10 uh sorry sets of uh drop 10 tons of uh, tnt on bases or get 20 or 30 ground ai kills like why why could we not do something like that you know give it a bit more variety especially now in a realistic where a bunch of maps have been made which are more tailored towards stuff like light bombers and attackers and you know ground attackers and strike fighters and stuff why not try and you know have the operation summer event show a bit of that as well that would have been nice but overall i'm i'm okay with these charges they're completely fine you know they they the plane challenges have normally been pretty nice the ship challenges have got easier. They've made them even easier. And I will say, the ship challenges before were already incredibly easy to do. They were easily the easiest out of the three. And now they've made them even easier. So that's telling me that nobody is playing ships. Um, <laughs> that's, that's basically it. So the fact that they've made them easier, obviously this is a positive thing for the community. It generally means that, you know, more people will get involved, uh, hopefully in Naval, and uh, enjoy it as much as I do. As I've said many times, I enjoy Rank 2 uh, rank one and two naval. I think it's really fun. It's a good way to take a break. It's not, you know, you don't have to concentrate too hard, especially in AB. You just run around and you hold down the trigger and you have a bit of fun. It reminds me of, you know, when you play like uh, certain like brain games, like um, if you have like a really stressful job and then you have like the squeezy ball, right? Uh, you have the stress ball. Uh, that is what Naval Arcade is to me. It's just a stress reliever uh, where I don't have to think and I can just relax. So the fact that they've made these challenges easier, maybe this is for some of you guys out there who weren't interested in Naval before. Maybe this is a way that you can now go, yes, let's let's do this. You know, let's uh, let's have a bit of fun with this and let's let's go forward with it. I mean, why, why not? You only have to get to rank two, right? It's not, it's not a huge uh, thing. Uh, getting to rank two in most nations is uh, not uh, too hard to do. So yeah, uh, I think the challenges overall, I would reduce the tank ones, um, the, the destroy 50 enemies. I think that's quite large, um, especially over a two day period. I was looking at my stats um, when it comes to what I do in battles. Normally, I get like maybe two to three kills a game, you know, and I have been playing a lot of 8-7. Obviously, lower tiers, I would get more, but three kills a game, and that's what. So 30 kills is 10 games, uh, 33, 36, 39, uh, that's 33, 40, oh God, 42 it's 20 it's 21 right so it'd be about 17 games so in or 16 17 games so trying to get like 50 enemies for me would be in 16 17 games so you're looking like once again that's that's a lot higher than it was before i don't think it, it's required to be that high it, it was fine how it was the uh, next part is all the same as last time. Obviously, I agree with this. The fact that they give options for PS4 players and Xbox One players to exchange their decorations is really nice. I, I wish that the consoles had access to the market, and I'm pretty sure that Gaijin would also like consoles to have access to the market. So hopefully that gets done at some point. So the vehicles. There are definitely issues I have with the vehicles. When it comes to this stuff, 
wonderful. The tasks, overall, I'm pretty happy with them. I would just reduce these tanker ones just a little bit, just to make them a little bit more fair. Um, and from my, my opinion. But the one thing that this is once again missing, the one thing that this is missing is the community aspect of it. The whole point for me of these events is to try and bring people together uh, a few times a year who normally wouldn't hang out or, or normally would, you know, go their own ways and bring them together to do these events. That's why we have stuff like the Tech Hub. That's why we have stuff, I suppose, like World War Mode and Squadrons. It's when the core goes out, everybody comes together, we have a good chat, we have a good time, you know, we share uh, interesting stories, you know, you get to know people from all around the world through a community. And it's just awesome. It really is. It's easily the best part of doing this YouTube stuff, of doing, you know, the Twitch stuff and the Discord stuff. The amount of just weird and wonderful and amazing people I've met around the world uh, who I've never actually seen, I've just talked to, is amazing to me. And I will never get over that fact. I will never get o uh, over the fact that I have the privilege of being able to experience that. It is, it is truly amazing to me. And I think there is a missed opportunity when it comes to these events from Gaijin's point of view to expand on that, to bring the community together. They used to do stuff. So this is the festive quest from 2018, right? Um, so you can see uh, 21st of December, 2018, so going into 2019. Uh, this had some pretty cool vehicles, um, you know, the T-30, the big honker. And what it also had was it had all of the normal, you know, prizes that you would get and obviously coupons back then too. The thing that is missing though, compared to Operation Summer to here, is this part. They did this a few times for certain events where they would have like a gimmick. And the idea was, is you would have a second set of challenges, which if you completed uh, over each of the weeks, then you would actually get a light on the Christmas tree. And if as a community, we together got as, you know, this amount of lights on the Christmas tree, you would get uh, even more content. You would get even more cool stuff. And... And for me, I thought this was amazing because it meant, hey, look, they, they've actually added like a community aspect to it. You know, we're, we're not just doing this all selfishly for ourselves, which is this part, but also now there's, there's, a, there's a working together. There's a, you know, and some of these uh, were like, you know, some of these were pretty simple. Well, some of these were pretty simple. I'd just get kills. Others were like, hey, let's, let's kill stuff with rockets or, you know, let's uh, kill vehicles like 1BR higher than you. So trying to like make you uh, play a little bit better, you know, complete an air assault mission. So these were a great way of getting people to play different parts of the game that they normally don't play. Like, I remember for me, to get the unguided one, I played Air Arcade. I hadn't played Arcade in like three years since uh, before then. And, you know, so it got me to play that. And then for Air Assault, you know, it got a lot of people into the PvE stuff. Also, Ground Assault was there as well. So it was a good way of uh, putting stuff, you know, into others. Now, it could have been improved. Like, they could have added some single missions in there. Like, you know, oh, you have to complete five single missions. You know, something to, once again, experience different parts of the game. But I tell you what, the system itself was really, really cool. Because it brought everyone together under one banner. It doesn't exist here, and that's the problem. That is the big problem that I have. This event, just like a lot of the other events, feels selfish. You are doing all of this for your own gain, whether it is to get the vehicles for yourself or whether it is to sell them so you can use the money for yourself. There is no collective award here. There is, there is nothing like that. There is no, if so many people get so many uh, decals, everybody else, you know, everybody gets a decal. There is no, you know, if everybody gets uh, so many weapons decorations, we'll add in another one that you can grind out. Or maybe, you know, if, uh, if so many people get the vehicles, then we'll release new skins. Or maybe we'll release a historical, you know, article about one of them. There, there's none of that stuff there. All of this is a selfish event from an individual point of view so that is that's kind of sad you know it it really is because i think personally 
one of the greatest things about War Thunder, and one of the greatest things about gaming in general, is the community that the games create and the different people that you meet along the way. And to see that not being represented in something like this is incredibly sad. So that, to me, would be my main critique. You know, the, 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 the overall structure of this event is great. It works much better than stuff like the Battlefield Engineer or the Operation Shipyard events, which are tailored against community members and designed to pit each other against each other using the market. These ones are much more fair from a challenge mode point of view. I think these are much better events than the others. But I still think that community aspect needs to be brought back. It needs to be brought back, just, as I said, to bring people together. The game becomes more healthy if you have larger communities which, you know, talk to each other, keep, uh, keep each other involved in the game. If you get rid of that, then you just become a bunch of solo players that, you know, eventually will get bored with the game and move on. So, hopefully, in the future, we see more community events, but overall, I would say the rating for this event is positive, just because of the main structure, it needs a bit of work with the vehicles, and also the community aspect. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Battling Bacon, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Conte Baraka, Daniel Stanton, E Love Goat, J Wilt, Martinez, Trigger Hippie, Universe A, Eugen's Terry, and also AI'm Devilish and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.